Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 15 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. Now that we have studied about the physical properties of alcohols and phenols, in this video we are going to start talking about the chemical reactions or chemical properties of alcohols and phenols. Alcohols and phenols are versatile compounds. Why do we call them versatile compounds? Because in their chemical reactions, they act both as nucleophiles and electrophiles, right? So alcohols act as nucleophiles when the bond between, what is an alcohol? An alcohol is ROH, where R stands for an alkyl group and the functional group is OH, that is the hydroxyl group. When the bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks, that is when the alcohol or the phenol act as a nucleophile. But when the bond between carbon, that is the carbon of the methyl group, ethyl group or whatever, the alkyl group, the carbon and oxygen breaks, that is when it acts as an electrophile. Right? Basically, alcohols and phenols both act as nucleophiles and alcohols definitely act as electrophiles um, when the carbon and oxygen bond is broken but in the case of phenols phenols in phenols the carbon and oxygen bond only breaks with zinc otherwise they do not show these reactions it is only with zinc that phenol would show uh, the breaking of carbon and oxygen and then act as an electrophile so let us now start studying about this Alcohols as nucleophiles, they act as nucleophiles when the bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks. What happens it? Here it is acting as a nucleophile. A nucleophile nucleus is positively charged and a nucleophile is a species which is attracted to positive charge. So the alcohol, it gets attracted or attacks a positively charged species like a carbocation. So here do you see the carbon is positively charged and there are three bonds here. So it attacks the carbon of a carbocation and the positively charged carbon. And what is attacking? Oxygen is electronegative and it has two lone pairs of electrons. So one lone pair of electron from oxygen, it is used up to form a bond, a covalent, which is actually a coordinate bond. When both the electrons in a covalent bond are contributed by one atom, the bond is known as a coordinate bond. So it results in the formation of a bond by the use of both the electrons of oxygen. When this happens, both the electrons of oxygen, a proper bond is formed and the carbocation is joined here. So as a result of which what happens, the OH we have put it up here and the oxygen, the lone pair of oxygen has been used to make this bond and carbon with three bonds is there. Now since carbon has got that electron from oxygen which did not belong to it, in a covalent bond both carbon and, and uh, oxygen should have contributed one electron each. But here, both the electrons were contributed by oxygen, therefore carbon, which was positively charged, has got that one electron, which it should have, which should have been its in order to form a covalent bond from oxygen, thereby making it neutral. So it loses the positive charge. But oxygen, which, ha which was neutral, has now kind of lost one electron to carbon, therefore the positive charge comes over oxygen, right? Now, oxygen is highly electronegative in comparison to hydrogen. It does not, it will not just sit there being positively charged because oxygen has a tendency to have a negative charge. It has a tendency to pull electrons towards itself. And hydrogen is the most uh, electro, uh, what will I say, the most electropositive non-metal. So electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen is very high. So what does oxygen do? Oxygen pulls the electron of hydrogen towards itself. And when it does that, hydrogen very easily, happily loses its electron and goes away as H positive. It leaves as H positive. H positive is a proton, remember. And it is a hydrogen ion. And what is left then is that R, since hydrogen left with leaving both the electrons of the bond, that lone pair which had been given to the carbon now is replenished again and therefore oxygen becomes neutral 
both the electrons come to oxygen and it has both the lone pairs now and it forms a normal covalent bond with the carbon next to it. So this is the compound that you get and hydrogen ion is given out. This is how the alcohols and phenols, when the OH bond breaks, they act as nucleophiles. The same thing is seen in the case of phenols also. We understand that when we do the equations. The second category or type of reaction is when protonated alcohols, they act as electrophiles. Here we mention alcohols, as I told you, that the phenols do not act as electrophiles unless and until they are reacting with zinc. Only in that case, otherwise they do not. So this is a reaction. This kind of reaction is usually shown only by alcohol. So we say, and when does alcohol show this reaction? When it is protonated. What is an electrophile? An electrophile is a species that is attracted to negative charge. Electron is negatively charged. So when it is attracted to negative charge, it itself should be positively charged. In order to be positively charged itself, it gets the positive charge from a proton. So it is protonated. When it is protonated, a proton is nothing but H positive. So when to alcohol, a proton is added. You RCH2OH is the alcohol. When you add H positive to it, a protonated alcohol is formed. And what happens here again is there are two lone pairs of electrons over oxygen. The two lone pairs of electrons over oxygen, one lone pair is used up to form a bond with hydrogen. And when one lone pair is used up to make a bond with hydrogen, the oxygen now has lost the one electron to or uh, one electron to this hydrogen. Therefore, oxygen acquires a positive charge. And thus you get a protonated, um, protonated alcohol, which now is positively charged on the whole and therefore it can act as an electrophile. So in the next step, what happens? This is a negatively charged ion, Br negative. So the alcohol, the protonated alcohol is going to be attracted to the negative charge. So the protonated alcohol gets attracted to the negative charge. And what happens? Br negative, having extra electrons, gives its electron to carbon. Now the question is, the positive charge is on oxygen. But Br negative is not giving its electron to oxygen. It is giving it to carbon. Why? Because in comparison to Oxygen. Oxygen is highly electronegative. So is Br negative. Both of them are electronegative. Carbon in comparison is more electropositive. So oxygen, there's a competition between two negative charges. You know, he says, I don't need your help. I'll take my electron from this bond. I'll just take it from the carbon. And when the oxygen pulls the electron from this carbon, this bond breaks. And H2O, since it takes both the electrons, the positive charge is lost. It becomes water, right? This becomes water, but this now the bond has broken between the bond that has broken has broken between carbon and oxygen. Here, the bond that had broken was between oxygen and hydrogen. Do you see the difference? So this bond breaks and we are now as soon as this bond breaks, the carbon which has lost its electron becomes positively charged and therefore the negatively charged Br, it attacks the carbon. So you get Br, CH2, R and water molecule, neutral water molecule is removed. So these are the two ways in which alcohols and phenols react. This one is where alcohols react. And in the case of phenols, it's a very sparing reaction. Only with zinc would it react. Now, based on the cleavage of OH or CO bond, whether the bond between oxygen and hydrogen broke or carbon and oxygen broke, you will get two categories of reactions. So we said based on the cleavage of OH or CO bonds, reactions of alcohols and phenols are divided into two groups. Reactions involving the cleavage of OH bond, where the alcohols and phenols act as nucleophiles and the second category is reactions involving the cleavage of CO bond where alcohols react as electrophiles and phenols only in one odd case act as um, act as electrophiles okay so we in this video now I'm going to start with the first category we are going to have a few videos on this topic to understand it well so 
the first category that is reactions involving the cleavage of OH bond the first category and where the alcohol or the phenol they act as nucleophiles did you notice here that in this reaction H positive was given out do you remember the definitions of acids and bases according to Lewis definition anything that gives out H positive is an acid and anything that gives out OH negative in water is a base and according to the Lowry Bronsted concept it's not necessary that an acidic substance will always get water or a base will always get or OH is definitely present substance are, substances are still acidic and basic even in the absence of water or even in the absence of OH negative ion so the Bronsted concept talks of only H positive. Any substance that gives a proton, H positive is nothing but a proton. Anything that donates a proton is an acid and anything that accepts that proton is a base. Right? So we will notice now in the reactions that since H positive was given, which is H positive is a hydrogen ion or you can call it a proton. According to both the definitions here, alcohol gave H positive, therefore alcohol is an acid, right? Now, acidity of alcohols and phenols. So th from this we understand that they, act, they are acting as nucleophiles, they are, the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is uh, breaking, but due to this, they, this particular type of reaction, they act as acids. So, how do we say, what are the properties of acids? When acids react with metals, they liberate hydrogen. So we will notice that, that reaction with metals, when, uh, when alcohols react with active metals like sodium, aluminum, potassium, they will give hydrogen. So here you see ROH with sodium atom. What happens? The bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks. So O, sodium joins the oxygen, results in the formation of salt, that is sodium alkoxide, and hydrogen is liberated, right? So whenever acids react with metals, it results in the formation of a salt and hydrogen ion, that is hydrogen is liberated. Therefore, that shows that alcohols are acidic in nature. Take this example, tertiary butyl alcohol. It is CH3, C, CH3, CH3, OH. It reacts with aluminum, to aluminum. Now, you'll have CH3, C, CH3, CH3, O, the bond between O and H breaks. How many hydrogens do you have? Six hydrogens. If all the six uh, molecules are undergoing the reaction, you get six hydrogens. So how many molecules of hydrogen uh, will be produced? There are six atoms of hydrogen. So three molecules of hydrogen will be produced. And aluminum has a charge of, aluminum ion has a charge of Al3 positive. So for three positives, there'll be, there'll be six negative, three positive into three positive, that is, uh, sorry, not into two, uh, into two will be six positive charges. So you need six negative charges. That is why we took six molecules of tertiary butyl alcohol. I'm just balancing the equation. I don't know why. I'm sure you understand it yourself. So uh, you get six uh, hydrogen atoms which form three hydrogen molecules and six of these ions negative ions will combine with six of these will combine with two of the aluminums so you'll have two molecules of Al and this particular part the negative charge whole thrice Al if it was let us say it is one negative charge so three positive and three negative charges. This is three positive, this is three negative, and if you multiply it by two, this will be six positives and six, six negatives. And this particular compound would be called aluminum tertiary butoxide, which is a salt. So what happened when the tertiary butyl alcohol reacted with um, an active metal like aluminum, it resulted in the formation of salt and hydrogen was given out, which again proves that this alcohol is acidic in nature. Now look at phenol. Phenol reacts with an active metal like sodium and the same thing happens. The bond between OH breaks, the sodium takes the place of hydrogen which is sodium. Is The active metal actually is much more electropositive than hydrogen. So it very easily displaces the hydrogen and forms a salt 
and the hydrogen leaves and therefore that is the property that is why it acts as an acid so the same thing happens alcohol is here 2 na results in the formation of sodium phenoxide ion hydrogen is liberated h2 gas is liberated which shows that it is acidic in nature how do we see now another example of phenols we also know that whenever acids react with bases now we are taking metals whenever acids react with bases the products are salt and water and what is that reaction known as you've studied it in 9th or 10th standard also it's known as the neutralization reaction right so look at this now phenol has OH right it reacts with NaOH results in the formation of salt that is sodium phenoxide so sodium phenoxide is formed and the hydrogen from here and OH from here result in the formation of water. So whenever an acid reacts with a base, it results in the formation of salt and water, which is a neutralization reaction. All of these reactions prove what? That alcohols and phenols are acidic in nature. Also, they prove that alcohols and phenols can act as nucleophiles whenever the bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks. So that is what we understand from these. So all the above reactions, this arrow shows the above reactions, all the above reactions show that alcohols and phenols are acidic in nature. They act as Bronsted acids. Now we are trying to categorize the different definitions. What is a Bronsted acid? A Bronsted acid is one that donates a proton, right? So they act as Bronsted acids by donating proton to the stronger base. Anything which is a stronger base than alcohol will act as a base and alcohol will start acting as the acid. So let us say anything that is negatively charged acts as a base on the whole. If you look at all the definitions of acids and bases, you will realize that acids basically are positively charged and bases basically are negatively charged. So a base that is negatively charged has lone pair of electrons, donates those electrons to the alcohol, which is an acid alcohol or the phenol which is an acid and it results in the formation of BH that is the conjugate the base it combines with H to form the conjugate acid and the O and the R which has gained the electrons and becomes negatively charged forms the conjugate base. So this was basically the reactions where you see that Alcohols and phenols, they act as acids, they can act as nucleophiles and electrophiles. And now in the next video, we will be studying more about the acidic nature, that is reactions involving cleavage of OH bonds. And we will actually be studying, uh, other than that, we will not be completing this even in the next video. We will be extending our discussion about this, this acidic nature of alcohols and phenols. I will explain to you what is causing this acidic nature. Why are they acting as acids? We'll understand the acidic nature of alcohols and phenols better in the next video. All right. So with this, I'll wrap up today's video. If you wish to watch other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the board. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.